it's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode six, 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 from Canada's Drag Race season two. Our queens were challenged to serve three looks in the Sinner's Ball. SD and Rock and Roll, Ugliest Sin, their ugliest eyesore couture, and Deadliest Sin. A look they created there using provided materials based on the seven deadly scents. And right off the bat, I've got to say this was an episode that I particularly enjoyed because there are so many designers on this season, it kind of felt like a mini episode of Project Runway. We'll be ranking each queen based on how they did overall in the ball, from rottest rat to hottest hot. We've got a lot to cover, but first, keep listening to hear how you can get a free Thanksgiving dinner with today's video sponsor, Ibotta, my favorite cashback rewards app. And I know what you're thinking, free money on things I'm already buying? It sounds too good to be true, but it isn't. All you have to do is download Ibotta using the link in the description of my video, Find Deals, and scan your receipts. Then voila, your earnings are deposited directly into your Ibotta account that you can withdraw to PayPal or via gift cards. And this Thanksgiving, Ibotta is giving away free Thanksgiving dinners. Just follow the in-app instructions to add things like turkey, cream of mushroom soup, mashed potatoes, and more to your shopping list. Then shop at Walmart in-store and scan your receipt when you're done. You'll earn your cash back in a flash. So what are you waiting for? Get a free Thanksgiving dinner and start earning cash back at places you're already shopping at. To do so, just click the link in the description of my video to download Ibotta right now. Thanks Ibotta for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get on our knees and pray for forgiveness. First up into the bottom of my list tonight is Cynthia Kiss. Her first look for the rock and roll category is giving me a little bit of 70s disco diva meets 2000s pop icon, maybe a little bit of Christina Aguilera dirty influence in there. And I've got to say, this was actually shocking to me how divisive this was across the judging panel. Some of the judges like Brooke and Gigi loved it and the others hated it. Personally, I was living. I thought this was one of Cynthia's best looks that she served on the runway across the entire season. I think to improve this look though and really take it all the way, she could have put snake print or red leather lace through those leg slits in the front all the way from the top where the slit starts down to the bottom. Because as cute as I think this look is, I think it did suffer from looking a little bit like the biker short issue that she had on the runway last week with how that sheer fabric that connected the slit at the top ended at the like mid bottom part of her thigh. This look did still manage to slither into a for me though. And as for her ugly as sin look, I don't know what the hell it is, but I do think it's adorable she thinks this is the ugliest she can look. She even pointed out on the runway when she was receiving critique that she would have no idea how stunning she would look in short hair. I do want to give her credit for going outside of the box on this look, but it ultimately didn't meet the brief. And because it wasn't ugly, much less ugly as sin, I can't give it a hot for the category. It was really just missing that dirt or grime factor to make it a sinful look. Just considered on its own though, she needs to keep this in her closet because it is totes adorbs and totally hot. And finally for her deadliest sin, she was assigned greed by Isis who had the duty of handing out the boxes to everybody. And in her box was a bunch of gold material. And unfortunately for Cynthia, this was the second time she used all gold material to make a design challenge runway. I will say this was certainly not the worst design challenge that we've ever seen in the world. And for this to be my least favorite of the design challenge looks, I think says a lot because <laughs> girl, we've seen some crazy design challenge looks in Drag Race history. Do I need to remind you of La La Rie's bag look we saw on season 13? Or Terry Berry's There's a Him Everywhere 10 Man Fantasy? But I do think the bigger problem with her look was that she was missing a greater concept for the deadly sin of greed. Had she, for example, kept the leopard print in the dress, but brought it all the way up her body into a skin tight little bodysuit with sleeves and a headpiece going around her head and then kind of given this take on a Cruella de Vil fantasy? Wow, that could have been a gag. Because what's more greedy than wanting to take the life of some innocent animal just so you can live? Anyways, this look was a rot. And in 666th place tonight is Kendall Gender. But for how low she was, this SD and rock and roll look is Wow, one of my favorites on the runway tonight. It is a beautifully constructed dance costume, and I love all those like custom flame pieces that are matching all over on the boots, the bodice, and when she turns around, her bussy. Oh, her bussy is on fire. She looks damn good in this, and I think the neon dreads were a great compliment to the look. This was absolutely hot. Concerning her ugly as sin look, was it? Absolutely. <laughs> 
But also, girl, what in the world was this? She is giving me like this red and orange, yellow clown schmock Tina Burner fantasy, but with the twist of a cat throwing up on her shoulder. I think Brooke gave a great critique to her when she said that this should have been taken all the way in the crazy cat lady world, you know, with cats all over her body instead of just one. Or alternately, I think she could have taken this in the clown direction and done like white clown makeup with a big red nose. A sin this outfit was, but fashion, it was not. It's a hat. And finally, for her deadliest sin, she was given pride represented by the color purple. And I do want to preface this with, she is somebody who openly says that she can't really sew. And considering that, I think she did a pretty decent job with her look. Like with all of the pieces overall, I was impressed. I just think the details were not finished and the overall effect of the look was a tad messy. To improve this look, I think she could have worked on hemming the edges, especially on the chest area. And kind of like Cynthia, her concept of representing pride was wasn't necessarily apparent until she started explaining why she was dressed the way she was, which was to celebrate her black identity. And that of course is a beautiful message, but when you have to explain what you're doing, I think it isn't ultimately successful. So for that reason, I'm going to give this look a rat. And fifth on me for my list tonight is Adriana. Her rock and roll outfit was very much giving me a Paula Abdul fantasy, which I was living for. And I really enjoyed her particular take on this runway because it was so unique. The like half coat layered dress thing with the half dancing bodysuit on the other side was really interesting to look at. And the pins up and down the boots keeping them together very identifiably in that rock and roll world. Rock on Adriana, this look was hot. And this for her ugly as said runway. She's giving me grand Grandma's ugly couch in the basement that nobody sat on for 50 years that's come alive and come to haunt us. She, I think, is one of the most intriguing minds in this season because she has such a wide breadth of style that she can execute on. I mean, it's just wild to me that the same person that did this amazingly beautiful pop star thing she did last week can also look like this. A literal potato with makeup on. This is definitely a look that my brain is going to keep going back to when I like least want it to. And so I think for that reason, she definitely succeeded in this category and I'm gonna give this look a hot. But as for her deadliest sin, girl, this runway really was her deadliest sin. <laughs> She was given the category at last represented by the color pink, and it was a very obvious place that she took this look. However, I think it was not a lack of direction, but rather too much attention to detail that ultimately was her downfall here. Like, she really did lose me the second she stepped out on the runway and they zoomed in on that little sleep mask with that messy hair, which I think really epitomized the entire look. It was ultimately messy. The problem was not that it was just a bodysuit. It was that it was a bodysuit with flowers glued to every orifice and piece of her body. She was going for effortless goddess, but ended up looking a bit more like a cheap date. This look, I'm not lusting after. It's a rat. Next up, what's love got to do with it? Maybe Kimora has the answer. She comes out in a tribute to the one, the only, the queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner, who, fun fact, was actually inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back in 1991 with Ike, and then actually re-inducted by herself this year. So this look, I think the tribute itself is beautiful, and the way she performed and walked on the runway was I think unmatched by any other queen. My problem was that this was really only half of a reference. I was missing the iconic Tina Turner hair. Like where is that over teased hair as high as the ceiling with bangs, dirty blonde wig? Where is it girl? Cause as fun, as important as it was to showcase Tina Turner for this runway category, it was a shame that she only took us halfway there. So gonna give this look a and for her next look, ugly as sin, girl, brace yourself. She says on the runway, I'm wearing a traditional slave garb that would be seen in the Caribbean. And that she, quote, wants the judges to see pain because one thing that is ugly as sin is slavery. And at the end of her runway, she breaks her chains free and runs to the place that she knows as her home of freedom, Canada. And I think firstly, we have to give her so much praise for how beautiful and brave it was to showcase such a raw and real look on the runway. Like having this visual on such a big platform that is being watched internationally is so important because it's a piece of history. It's important that we remember it and talk about it and see it and continue to strive to make change in the world. So to Kimura, I say thank you for sharing this with the world and this look I give a hot. And finally for her deadliest sin, 
get those snakes off this mother tucking runway. She was given envy, represented by the color of green. And I think her look here was successful on multiple levels. Firstly, there's a clear concept that not only says sin, but represents envy. She like is physically the Garden of Even with that snake going around her body that I'm pretty sure she made there and with that same fabric also created a beautiful dress with mermaid skirt detail. It's a classy and can't be taken on a traditional sin and I think a lot of the girls kind of struggled to represent their sin while Kimura succeeded in doing so. Kimura, I'm ready to take a bite. This look is hot. And next up, J -J -J Jia, who was in the bottom in the very first episode's design challenge. She had a lot to prove tonight and I think she was quite successful. For her first look in the rock and roll category, she comes out literally as a guitar. And I will say something about this was a little strange to me with the way the guitar pointy piece at the bottom poked out of her hip. And it did feel like Tad been there done that considering she did do the one leg out thing silhouette that we've seen before. I do think though that she deserves a lot of credit for thinking outside of the box and doing something silly and whimsical and campy that no one else really thought to do. So while this look isn't necessarily my favorite genre, I I can appreciate her, you know, unique take on this category, and I'm gonna leave it at a soft hot. But as for her ugly Ascend runway, this was one of the best looks on the stage tonight. This is when art imitates life. Assuming, of course, this is a reference to Seattle's gum wall, but even if it isn't, it's still amazing. It is ugly, it's gross, and I love that she thought of the detail that if she had a look made out of gum, it's gonna have random little like hairs and things stuck to it. And I think it was overall a very complete look. She thought also to put gum in the hair. And it was also interesting because it kind of evoked this 80s style on top of all of that. And I do have to say, I didn't have to chew long on this look to come to the decision that it was 100% her deadliest sin was sloth, represented by the colors baby blue and white, which I think was an interesting challenge because when I think of deadly sins, I don't necessarily think of bright colors. Her take though was brilliant. She's giving us a Cinderella fantasy that slept too late and doesn't give an F about it. And I want to stress how important the reference to Cinderella was here because this is a sinner's ball and Cinderella what? Went to a ball. She also matched this look in her makeup and the makeup on the pillowcase that she's carrying around. Gee, I'll never get tired of your brilliant takes on drag. This look is hot. And in second place tonight for me is Isis Couture. For her first look, rock and roll, I can definitely appreciate this, but it's not really kind of like how I felt about Gia's my personal taste. I can see that it's good. Beautifully constructed details with that leather jacket and the little tassels coming off of the zebra print bodysuit and all of that. My preference for things in the rock and roll sphere, if you will, are more in line with like how Brooke dressed tonight, who was effing stunning. So while this was a little too bright and whimsical for my personal preferences, I concede that she played all the right chords on the runway and I'm gonna give this look a hot. And concerning her ugly as sin look, she is giving us a crocheted doily fantasy. She does such an excellent job at selling a fantasy that like even if you don't like the looks, you have to appreciate her attention to detail and how damn good she looks. To clarify though, this is one of my favorite looks on the runway tonight. I love it. I am starting to notice a trend though whenever Drag Race gives an ugly dress category, it seems that crocheted looks are always the way to go. We've got hers, Pythias, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and of course, like from back in the day, Katya's. She 100% gave me ugly as sin, creepy doll sitting in the corner of your grandparents' bedroom that you're sleeping in for the weekend and is scaring you because you're scared that it's gonna come to life and kill you while you're sleeping. This look is hot. As for her deadly sin, wrath. This look, I liked a lot, especially at first. It's very clearly evoking the world of pain and pleasure that I can't necessarily reference because of YouTube ad guidelines, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I did get a little bit confused though as I started to listen to her voiceover for the look and she was describing this as Hellraiser but make it lesbian and I was like, what does that even mean? And then I was trying to decipher that and look at the look and I was like, I'm not really getting either of those things from this so I don't understand that, but it still is really cool. So kind of left me in a strange place, but a very interesting and fashionable look still, I have to say. So I'm going to leave this with a hat. 
And finally, the queen of my ball tonight, who I think was kind of robbed, Pythia. I love this from the second that she stepped out in the runway because A, purple mullet. B, those pant boot things that she made, amazing. Then I liked it even more when she tweeted out the reference. Pythia was giving the Bowery girl. I also loved the way that she layered all those belts to create this. It kind of reminded me of Lulu from Final Fantasy X, who's one of my favorite game characters of all time. Girl, just for the pants alone, this look is hot. And as for her ugliest sin look, crochet is the way to go. This look also, I think, was taking a lot of inspiration from that iconic club kid era. The makeup is also giving me very art pop. And speaking of that makeup girl, I cannot believe that she served us three completely different, perfectly executed mugs tonight. Like she went above and beyond. She's got the hairy legs and the overgrown toenails sticking out. So iconic from head to toe. And I have to say, I think her, Isis, and Gia were the only queens that met the full brief of eyesore couture for this category. Ugly, but make it fashionable. This look is hot. And for her deadly sin, she was given gluttony. She is giving us Wicked Witch of the West meets Peppermint Patty from Candyland. And Miss Patty has had too much candy and before she can even walk onto the runway. Bleh. She made a mess on the side. And again, the amazing makeup. How did she have time to do this? And I think this is not only one of my favorite looks of the entire night, but maybe of the entire season so far. It's so good. Pythia ate tonight and left no crumbs. This look is hot. And as for my hottest hots in each category, <laughs> rock and roll goes to Kendall Gender. Ugly as sin, Pythia. And deadly as sin, Pythia. And I also asked my patrons what they thought over on patreon.com and they voted for Pythia and Kamora Amor and Isis Couture in each category, respect. And overall, I've got to say I'm so impressed with this season. I am loving Canada's Drag Race season two. It feels like such a breath of fresh air. Seriously, <laughs> congratulations to everybody that has been on this season so far. It's amazing. I mean, it's worth tuning in just to see what Brooke is wearing every single week, right? And speaking of those judges, I personally would have given the win to Pythia tonight, but I do think Isis's win was justified. And as for the bottom two, Cynthia and Kendall, they were also my bottom two of the evening. Aziana, though, could have been a substitute for the bottom two as well, though. Kendall, I think, has been flirting with the bottom two for so many weeks in a row now that it was time to see her lip sync. And Cynthia, bless her heart, it was her third time in the bottom, second week in a row, and this early in the competition when that happens, you really just kind of can't come back from that. And I did react to their lip sync over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash buzzyqueen, so make sure you go check that out. Patreon is my members only website where my patrons get exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, access to exclusive videos, access to the Busty Queen Discord server and more. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But ultimately, I do think Cynthia's elimination made sense, all things considered. Even though I've got to say, I don't think I've fallen in love this much with an early out contestant in a long time. She's so funny, such an amazing performer and an amazing singer. She's got a bright future and really her only weak spot, I think, was some of her runways. And honestly, that's the easiest thing to fix. Like, girl, if we see her on All Stars in a few years, I think those other bitches better watch out. As always though, I'd love to hear what you think, so let me know down in the comments below who had your favorite look in each category, who do you think should have been in the bottom two, and who do you think won that lip sync? And also wanna say thanks to you for watching today's video, today's video is sponsor, and my generous patrons for making my channel possible. I also wanna give a special shout out to Lark, Ali Al, Angel, Cyrus, Felicia, Goody P, Jared Rox, JB, Joseph, Josh Marchand, JP in Dallas, Laura, Lisette, Maxi Lo, wow, Miss F, Neely, OG Debuse, Rochambeau, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Topher, Triton, and Wheelie, who are all supporting me on Patreon at the Bussy Queen Collector tier. See you next time. Love ya. Bye.